Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. One thing I don't think I've ever mentioned in any of my videos is the fact that when I was younger, I used to throw the Frisbee quite a bit. <laughs> I also had a skateboard, by the way, and somebody a couple weeks ago accused me of hating on skateboarders, which is not true because, number one, I didn't. And number two, I also, and I still have it, I have a skateboard. And when I was in junior high and high school, I spent a lot of time traveling about town on the skateboard. And quite often, I'd be traveling with the skateboard and a Frisbee underneath my arm going to play with some of my friends. So Jeff sent me a note yesterday. I said, Steve, check out the story that involves those throwing discs. And of course, Frisbee's a brand name. And uh, I believe that there are now other companies that make uh, throwing discs that are considered to be better than the old Frisbee's. But uh, this involves a company called Prodigy, and they're suing a guy named Gannon Burr for breach of contract. And the reason that this is so interesting is that uh, Gannon Burr is apparently quite a good uh, disc thrower, and, and he is, I believe, 17 years old. Uh, at least he was underage when he signed the contract, which may or may not come into this. So the story is from discgolf.altiworld.com. And that's Prodigy sues Gannon Burr for breach of contract, seeking to block him from leaving an endorsement contract early. And they're also asking for monetary damages. Now, the story is written by Charlie Eisenhood and Christopher Wickland. Uh, and it's a stunning development in professional disc golf. So we're talking about the guys who go to a disc golf course and you throw the Frisbees, the discs, and try to get them into little baskets. Okay. So they tried really hard to come up with games uh, that can be turned into sports like this with the Frisbee back in the day. There's also a game called Ultimate. There's also a game called Guts. And Guts Frisbee, by the way, actually has roots in Calumet, Michigan. Another story altogether. But we're talking about here professional disc golf. So Prodigy, which is a manufacturer of discs, has filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court against Gannon Burr for attempting an early termination of his endorsement contract with Prodigy. The company is based in Georgia, and they're trying to block Burr from working with or promoting competitors. They also want to require Burr to fulfill his Prodigy contract through the end of this year, and they're also looking for monetary damages. Now, the fight appears to have started in the past few months and swiftly blew up into legal maneuvering earlier this year. Now, the man's mother co-signed his endorsement contract, and the two of them reached out to Prodigy last year asking to get Burr released from this contract. And that is extremely important because you should know that when you sign a contract, generally speaking, I sign a contract, you sign a contract, it's legally binding, right? If one of us is underage, many states say that a contract is voidable if you signed it while you're underage. And when you become of age, you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I was underage. And so contracts can, can become voidable depending on the state and the circumstances. But also here with his mother signing the contract, presumably she's an adult. So if the two of them signed the contract, his portion might be voidable, but hers might not be. I'm just pointing that out. So according to the filings by Prodigy, Prodigy responded to Burr's request by expressing a willingness to restructure and, if necessary, renegotiate the deal. Then on January 13th, Burr sent an email to PDI notifying them that he was invoking a 30-day clock to terminate the endorsement contract on the basis of material breaches, of which he said there were more than one. Attorneys for Prodigy denied there were breaches, but Burr's lawyers followed up with a letter claiming that all cure attempts had failed and termination was effective immediately. It's not uncommon for a contractor to say, we promise to do the following things. If we fail to do those things, we'd be in breach. However, if you think we failed, you must notify us of what you perceive to be the breach and give us an opportunity to cure. So that means that there's a list of things. You think I failed? You send me a letter saying you failed. 
I then say, okay, here's how I'm going to cure that. Did I cure it? Yes or no? Well, of course, that needs to be settled by court. It is still a dispute. But this process is built into the contract. So Ulta World Disc Golf has reviewed the court filings made from PDI, which included purported copies of email communications from Burr and his mother at the time of publication. Uh, no substantive filings from Burr were available for the review of the people at Ulta World Disc Golf. Uh, Burr and uh, someone else here declined to comment on the story. Prodigy did not respond to request for comment. I'm guessing the other person not responding is his mother. The dispute appears to have escalated after January 13th email from Burr to Prodigy. In that email, Burr alleged five items that he said constituted a material breach of the endorsement contract. One is that he didn't receive a PDGA Rookie of the Year commemorative disc, despite promises that he'd get one. He did not receive regular sales reports to verify royalty payments on disc sales. Uh, I said, my mom and I were told that we would see those at any time, but they'd never been sent to us. So an accounting of sales when you're entitled to commissions or royalties would be a problem. Burr did not get to select which signature disc he would receive and that he was promised two but only received one. He says that's negatively impacted his potential earnings. Prodigy's disc quality is poor, he says, and the molds are inconsistent, which would not be good if true. You don't want to endorse a product that you can't heartily stand behind. He also says he's owed $500 in unpaid bonuses. Now, in response, Prodigy sought to cure those breaches and relied on the endorsement agreement's language providing for the 30-day cure period, which we talked about. So they paid him the 500 bucks they owed him. They sent him a sales report. And in the court filings, they said the signature disc and the uh, rookie of the year commemorative disc complaints are not breaches as they were not specified in the contract as requirements. And so this is an interesting thing. He says you breached the contract by not doing these things. They go, uh, those things aren't in the contract. Now, I do wonder how big these things are, because if they're trivial, you say, well, why is he complaining about them? Well, if they're trivial, why don't they cure them? <laughs> so, in response to the claims of poor disc quality, Prodigy wrote in a letter to Burr, PDI stands by its products and takes pride in the care devoted to creating discs of the utmost quality for your top performance. We are troubled and confused by your sudden issue with the quality of these products that have brought you such great success thus far in your career and hope this concern was not fabricated merely as an excuse to avoid your duties under the agreement. PDI made similar defenses in the court filings, writing that from 2016 to 2022, GB never once complained to PDI about the quality of our products, claiming the quality issues are a mere cover story for terminating the endorsement agreement. Further, wrote Prodigy, while PDI stands by the quality of its products, the endorsement agreement does not grant GB the right to terminate it based on fictitious product quality concerns. So as of right now, it looks like, and there's more to the story, it looks like there's some big questions to be resolved because I guess the Disc Golf Pro Tour All-Star Weekend is coming up. <laughs> How did I miss that? Uh, along with, of course, uh, a whole season of, of disc golfing. And so if he's in a fight with his sponsor, uh, what's he going to do with respect to things that he would have done for a sponsor? Because it looks like he has not switched sponsors yet. And, of course, if he did that, that could create a real bizarre issue because if a court rules that he was wrong to leave the first one, then the second one could get upset also. So we'll see what happens. But like I said, the biggest issue that, that was pointed out to me here is the fact that this is a young man, and I think he might be 17 years old. I saw that number around here somewhere. But I can tell you that if you go to pdga.com, which is the Pro Disc Golf Association, uh, the man is on the list, and he's number four right now on the U.S. Tour. Number four. Number four. We're talking about Gannon Burr. And his career earnings to date, how much money he's earned throwing a Frisbee. <laughs> it's old school. $106,869. So the man has made career earnings on the tour, as they say, 
106, 869, number four on the tour. So he's a great disc golfer. Uh, he might be the future of disc golf. And right now he's in a contract dispute with Prodigy, the maker of fine disc golf products. So discgolf.ultaworld.com ran the story written by Charlie Eisenhood and Christopher Wickland. Jeff sent it to me. Thanks a lot. I spent a lot of my youth <laughs> winging a Frisbee back and forth. And in fact, I remember bringing them to school. And at lunchtime, uh, the school I was at, we had a, a cafeteria at one end of the gymnasium. And when you're done eating, you could wander over and shoot baskets, basketball. And I would often bring a Frisbee. Me and my friends would stand at opposite ends of the opposite sides of the gym and throw the Frisbee back and forth in a windless environment. Ain't nothing better. And uh, do that. And then lunch ends, you go put the Frisbee back in the locker, grab some books and go to your first class of the afternoon. So it's a great story. We'll see what happens. I, I, I hope the kid uh, gets the result that he wants. That is, I'm sure he's simply looking for a, uh, a sponsor that he can work with and live with and be happy with. Could be these guys, might not be these guys, we'll see. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. If you're not supposed to eat at night, then why is there a light bulb in the refrigerator?